everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm already a lettering artist from the Gold Coast in Australia. I have many online courses and procreate brushes available. So if you're interested in checking that out, everything is linked in the description. Now, if you've been here before, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be working on a 3D letter form with an emboss effect. I received so many positive feedback on my previous tutorial for Christmas. So I decided to make one for Valentine's Day this time. And in this tutorial, we're also gonna be looking at how I use the light brush from my toolkit, such as the RetroSign toolkit or the Nostalgia Lettering toolkit, because I received quite a few questions on that. So if that's something you wanted to know, that's what we're going to be doing. Now, before we begin, make sure you download your freebies. I have provided a mini Procreate brush set that includes seven brushes. I have also provided you with the template of the letter form that you can use. So it's just a PNG that you can copy and paste. And I have also given you my color palette. As always, feel free to use your own colors, your own template, your own lettering. And if you're a beginner, just do exactly what I'm doing. All right, that's everything you need to know before we begin, so let's get into it. Okay, so let's begin the tutorial. First thing you're going to do is download your files. They will look something like this. You should have three files, the swatches, the brushes, and the template. So make sure you install all of them. Then what you can do is tap on the love letter template, tap and hold, click on share, and click on procreate and that should open the file with procreate automatically so there it is when you open it you'll see that you'll probably see nothing so the template is actually white but then you can change the background color to black this document is 3000 by 3000 pixels so another way to do it is just create a new document and then click add and then insert a file and then you would insert your V template. So this V is actually part of a typeface that I've created. It is called Sharp Shooter. It is available in my RetroSign Toolkit 2.0. If you want to create a different letter form, you can totally use that. You could hand draw the letter form yourself. You could use any existing typeface. This is totally up to you. If you're a beginner, I always recommend just following along and doing exactly what I'm doing just to make things easier. So the very first thing I'm going to do is add some little studs on the letter form just to give it a bit more personality. Again, this is totally optional. So I'm going to make sure I am on this template layer. So I'm going to rename that just so that it will be easier for the video. I'm just going to call it uppercase V. And I'm going to grab the perfect inking brush from the brush set I have provided. And here all I'm going to do is draw a little spike on the left hand side. Just like that. And I'm going to select that and click copy and paste. And then flip it horizontally and then move it to the right hand side so they're exactly the same and then I'm going to merge these two layers together. Alright so the next thing I'm going to do is change the color of the letter. I'm going to just make it that pink color that I've given you from the color swatches just like that and then I'm going to create a new layer for the background color so tapping on new layer and then I'm just going to drag this layer underneath and I'm going to rename it just so it's easier and I'm going to call that background and I'm going to fill the entire layer with that lilac color. So you should have something that looks like this. Now we can move on to the next part where we add the 3D effect. So all I'm going to do is duplicate the V, select the one underneath and I'm going to rename it as well and I'm going to call it V3D. So I know this is going to be the dimensional effect. I'm going to change the color before I move it. So I'm going to select that darker pink, so not the red, the darker pink, although the red might look cool too. I'm going to just move it somewhere below to the left. So I'm just dragging it down towards the left. I like something like this, so not too big, not too small. 
and then grabbing my perfect inking brush you've guessed it we're just going to connect the angles and just drawing the shape and filling it with color when you have something like that it might be easier to just lower the opacity of the top layer so then going back on that dimensional effect and making sure you connect the corner. Having the top layer a bit transparent really helps. Make sure you're drawing correctly and then you can change it back to full opacity. Let's do that one more time. Make sure you don't forget any side and as always, the tip is to make sure that you're always going on the same angle. So whatever line you're drawing it should be the same for every corner. So you should have something that looks like this. It's already looking quite dimensional, but we're going to add a cast shadow and that's really going to make it look three dimensional. And the best way to do that is just to duplicate the shapes we already have. So I'm going to simply select the V and the dimensional effect. I'm going to group them together and then duplicate that group. And then I'm gonna select the group at the bottom. I'm gonna tap on the group, click flatten, and then I'm going to create a new layer just above that flattened group and create a clipping mask and I'm just going to change the color of that layer make it fully purple and then I'm gonna flatten these two together and now you should have a shape that looks like that and that's that's going to be our shadow so I'm just going to it was somewhere around here and I'm just going to move it in the same direction as the dimensional effect I am then going to change the blending mode of this layer and change it to multiply if you guys have done any of my tutorials before you know the drill you know how that works but for anyone who's new hopefully I'm going slow enough if something doesn't make sense make sure you go back you can pause the video you can also lower the speed of the video so that should help to make the drop shadow we're just going to add a little bit of motion blur I like the motion blur because it really looks super natural I think so I'm going to go into the same direction as my dimensional effect so you can play with the motion blur if you've never played before but you'll see that if you tap and move your pen on the canvas it's just going around so I'm just going to go in this direction so I'm gonna tap and drag in the same direction as my dimensional effect not too much or something like that and that's looking a bit harsh so I'm just going to lower the opacity of this layer to let's say 50 percent I'm also going to rename it so you guys can follow along more easily and I'm gonna call that cast shadow okay so we should have something that looks like this and I still think it needs a little bit more of a second shadow so what I like to do sometimes is just create multiple layers of shadow so if you've done any of my master classes as well you would know what I'm talking about so what I'm gonna do here is just duplicate that dimensional effect again so a second time and I'm gonna grab that dark purple change it to that dark purple gonna kind of move it just above that cast shadow and I'm gonna rename it small shadow so you can see what I'm doing you'll see that it's just going to create like a, a very tiny shadow just below the letter form and I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply once again and I'm also going to add a bit of adjustment but this time I'm gonna add some Gaussian blur and I think about 5% should be enough I really want it to be very subtle, like you can reposition it if you need. I might lower the opacity as well to about 50%. It's very subtle, very hard to see, but it just adds a little bit more realism to the piece, I think. And also, I think this cast shadow, now that I look at it, it's probably a bit too dark. So let's just go ahead and lower the opacity again to about 30%. That's better. It doesn't have to be too dramatic. 
I think I'm also going to add a bit of Gaussian blur. <laughs> As you guys can see, a lot of the time my process is just going back and forth. Like I never know exactly what I'm going to do. It's a lot of the time a matter of just stepping back, looking at your work and adjusting if needed. All right, let's work on adding the emboss effect on the left ear. So if you guys have done my tutorials before, you know I love to do that empty look, but this time I'm gonna show you the emboss look. So it's again a different look that I like. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to simply create the inside shape. You guys know the drill. We're gonna have to draw that shape, unfortunately. So I'm going to create a new layer just above that pink V. I'm going to use the same color as the background, so that light lilac color. I'm just going to go ahead using the perfect inking brush and I'm going to try and make it as precise as possible, but I'm going to try and draw like an inline. So my best tip here is just to take your time. Don't hesitate to go back and forth between your brush and your eraser. So if you've gone too far, you can just erase. And that should work if you take your time. Also, if you need to make a straight line, you just draw and hold and it will create a perfect line. And if you tap with one finger, it's going to snap it vertically as well, which is quite useful. But yeah, that's something I always explain in my classes is that they haven't really given us an option to create a stroke or an outline in Procreate, which I hope it is a feature they will update soon. If we have enough people asking for it, guys, <laughs> it might be something they add later on. So let's all ask for the option to create a stroke. I would save so much time. Although I really enjoy drawing, like to be honest, like I find this step somehow quite relaxing. I can already hear you guys saying, actually, this is not relaxing. This is super stressful because <laughs> I can't get it to look right. But I promise you that with practice, it it will happen. You can only get better every artwork that you make, you get better. Also, now that we have a little bit of time to chat, I would love to hear your thoughts, guys. If you have any ideas for tutorials, Anything you want to know, any suggestions, I'm always happy to hear them. I really want to create more YouTube videos as well, so I'm always open to suggestions. So once you've done your outline, hopefully we've done it right, you should be able to just drag your color in it. If that's not working, there's probably a stroke that's still open somewhere. You can fix those little corners if needed. What I would suggest you do for the pointy bits like that is to use the eraser to make sure it's super smooth. I am using the same inking brush as an eraser. All right, well done guys. <laughs> that was probably the most difficult step out of this entire tutorial. Now that we've made it this far, we can have fun and really enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create that second dimensional effect for that inner stroke. I'm just going to rename the layer first and I'm gonna call that inside. So I know it's the inside part of that letter. I'm going to duplicate it again. So now I should have two and I'm gonna select the one underneath and I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. To do that, I like to add a layer that I'm going to change to multiply. So I create a new layer just above that bottom layer 
called inside, the one underneath. I'm gonna create a clipping mask, change the blending mode to multiply, and I'm just going to add that purple. So it's just going to recolor that layer and I'm gonna change the opacity to about 50%. We can always adjust that later, but let's just have a look. Now I'm going to grab the layer on top and I'm going to move it in the same direction as my dimensional effect. And I want it to remain quite small, like I still want it to be subtle, like I don't want to go outside of the shape of the letter, so I want it to remain inside. Something like this. You can see I haven't moved it too much. And I think I'm going to change the opacity of that multiply layer to about 30%. Here you will need to connect the angles as always. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the correct layer. You want to be on the layer that's at the bottom. So just under that shadow layer that you have created. You want to be using the same color. So the same light purple color. And we're just going to connect the angles. Again, another step I always go over in all of my courses. If you've done any of my courses, you know the drill. It's looking pretty cool already. The last thing I want you to add before we add any highlights, shadow, any light bulbs and stuff like that is the arrow. So because it's a Valentine's Day letter, I wanted to add some sort of like Cupid's arrow going across the letter form. And for that, I have given you guys a brush that is called Cupid's arrow. It's going to be fairly simple here. You're just going to grab your brush and I'm gonna grab that dark purple. Feel free to use any color of your choice. And I'm just going to create a new layer above that group where I have all of my shapes. So above everything else. And I'm gonna rename it Arrow. And here it's gonna be fairly simple. You're just going to stamp your arrow in the middle. Um, feel free to leave it like that if you think you like it this way. I am going to tilt mine and put it on an angle. Something like that. I think I'm just gonna kind of lower it down a little bit and I'm just going to position somewhere around here. Might make it slightly smaller as well, but feel free to do whatever works best for you. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is kind of hide the part that's in the middle. So make it look like it's going through that 3D letter. So I'm going to tap on my arrow layer and click on mask. So if you guys have never worked with masks, it's actually just a layer that hides an object and to hide anything, you just use black. And if you want to unhide, you use white. So the difference between a mask and an eraser is that a mask, you don't delete anything and you don't lose anything. So you're just putting a mask on top of it and hiding something in the background. And if you ever need to bring it back, you can. So you just use black or white. So let's just grab black. So in the color palette again, I've provided some black and you can use any brush to hide with black. So perfect inking brush should do the trick. So you've guessed it, we're just going to draw where we need to hide. And the great thing about the mask is that if you've gone too far, you've erased too much, you just switch back to white and then you can just draw back. So hopefully that makes sense. If you've never used mask, it can be a bit confusing at the start, but I promise that once you know, it's like it's such a great tool. Right, so here I don't want to erase it just straight like that. I think it doesn't look really realistic. Instead, I think having like a little rounded shape would work well. So I'm going to grab the white again, or the size of my brush, and I'm just gonna kind of create like a semicircle, like a rounded shape like that. Looks pretty good. Okay, so this is what my arrow looks like. Let's add a shadow underneath this arrow because at the moment it doesn't look like it's part of the image. So to add the shadow, it's very simple. Again, we're just going to duplicate the arrow. So I'm gonna select the layer called arrow, click duplicate and make sure you select the one at the bottom. What I'm gonna do is merge the mask. So I'm going to merge the layer mask and the arrow together. 
This doesn't need to be a mask anymore. I'm gonna change the blending mode to multiply and change the opacity to about 30%. And that should create a nice shadow. So something like that I think is nice. So I'm kind of just moving it up until this part is like touching the edge. I'm trying somehow to go in the same direction as the dimensional effect, but I'm just trying to have the distance between here and here. Hopefully that makes sense. What I'm going to do is add a little bit of a Gaussian blur to make it look more realistic. I'd say about 5%. That should be enough. Um, I think I still need to lower the opacity a little bit. Maybe 25%. All right, this is looking pretty cool so far. Let's move on to the next step where we're going to add shadows, highlights, and background elements. Let's add some shadow to that dimensional effect for the pink shape. I'm going to go back to that group with all of my layers for the V and I'm going to select the V 3D. So that's this shape over there. I'm going to create a clipping mask on top of it. So create a new layer and select clipping mask. So the layer is attached to it. I'm gonna change the blending mode of that layer to multiply. Now I'm going to use that darker pink, so that third color from the color swatches, and I'm gonna use the smooth details brush this time. All I'm going to do here is gradually add a little bit of shadow on the corners of that letter form. And here, because there's a sharp corner, I'm going to use the eraser. So I'm using the perfect inking brush to erase that creates a straight line and a sharp angle like that. And I'm gonna do the same here. And here in this little corner. side over here as well a little bit on this side and here as well now what i like to do most of the time is add two layers of shadows just to make it more realistic and a little bit deeper so i'm going to create a second new layer on top make it a clipping mask also change the blending mode to multiply. And this time, instead of using the pink, I'm going to use the dark purple. I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing. I'm at lower the opacity of the brush, so it's not too sharp. But all I'm going to do, essentially, is just deepen that shadow. So you can see the difference. It's just very subtle, but it's just going to make it look even more realistic. So that should be extremely subtle. And again, you can erase anything that's going outside of your the area you want shadow on. It's barely visible. <laughs> awesome, I'm quite happy with that. Now let's add some shadow on the actual dimensional effect, the second dimensional effect that we've created. I'm going to create a new layer just above that shadow layer that we added. I don't know if you guys remember. So just creating a new layer again, make it a clipping mask, change the blending mode to multiply, and we should be just above that dimensional effect for that second shape. Same brush, the smooth details with the dark purple, and I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing. Kind 
kind of positioning the shadow exactly in the same spots as well. So the uh, same spot as the pink shape. All right, so I think this um, shape kind of looks a little bit out of place. I think we could add another shadow just here. So what we can do is just select that second dimensional effect that we've added. So I'm gonna select those four layers together and I'm gonna group them so you'll have a group inside the group. So just to show you, this is this part. So I've just grouped all of those layers together and I'm going to duplicate it, select the one at the bottom, merge, this group. So now you can create a new layer, make it a clipping mask, change the color to that dark purple and merge these two together. So it's just, I've just recolored that flattened group and you should have a shape that looks like this. And I'm just going to, I'm pretty much not going to move it. Like I'm going to keep it where it was. So just underneath, so you can't really see it. And I'm just gonna add a bit of Gaussian blur. So hopefully you guys can see that on camera. I'm gonna add about 3%, 4%. Let's go 4% and I'm gonna change the opacity to 50% and change the blending mode to multiply. Something like that. Cool, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I think it's time to add some highlights. So we're gonna add some highlights on that dimensional effect for the pink shape. So let's go ahead and create a new clipping mask just above the two layers of shadow that we had for that dimensional effect. Instead of multiply, this time we're going to use the add mode, which is going to brighten up everything. And I'm gonna use that light purple. So you guys know me, I never use white, I never use black. I think you absolutely don't need those colors. If you are using a good color palette, you just need the darkest color or the brightest color of your color palette to create shadows and highlight. So I'm going to just add a little bit of a reflection on this side. So pretty much just wherever I haven't added any shadow, I'm going to add a highlight. And you can see my brush is not um, full opacity. So I want to keep that fairly subtle, guys, because otherwise it might look a bit wrong if it's too bright. Something like that. I might even like lower the opacity of this layer because I want it to be that subtle. So I'll show you the difference. So this is without and with the highlight. I think I want to add now a bit of a reflection on that dimensional effect, that second dimensional effect that we've added. And for that, I'm just going to create a new layer just above that main shape, that second 3D effect, and make it a clipping mask and change the blending mode to add. And I'm just going to, again, use the smooth detail brush and I'm using the light purple set to add and I'm just going to create some type of a reflection something like that kind of accentuating kind of focusing on the top right corner and I might even just add a bit of Gaussian blur so it's like super smooth something like that great I might lower the opacity a little bit about 80% there is no right or wrong, guys. It's totally up to you. So before we move on to adding the light bulbs and the final decorative elements, I want to add some type of shadow and highlight on the background. At the moment, we just have that background color, which is just a light purple. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to grab my perfect inking brush with the light purple. So I'm gonna draw a big circle. So you guys won't be able to see it. So let's change the blending mode to add. So now you can see the circle. I'm gonna fill it with color. So all I want really is to have like a white circle and I'm going to add 
a lot of gauge and blur so probably about 80 percent and that's just going to give like a nice glow behind the letter form and i'm going to change the opacity to 40 percent so again very subtle but it's just add a little bit of a light in the center behind the letter which i think really makes it pop i'm going to do the same but i'm going to add a shadow so just above that background layer again i'm creating a new layer changing the blending mode to multiply and this time I'm going to grab the dark purple I'm going to draw a circle it doesn't have to be a perfect circle to be honest but this time instead of filling it with purple I'm going to fill the outside with purple might need to reposition it if you need make it bigger great and then add some Gaussian blur again so that's why it doesn't have to be perfect because we're adding the Gaussian blur something like that I'm going to change the opacity to 40% again about 40% cool that's just adding a bit of depth to that image we have the highlight and the shadow okay so now we can move on to my favorite part and that's adding the lights so guys let's create a new layer just above everything else let's rename that layer lights Let's change the blending mode of this layer to add. So we have a new layer on top of everything else. We've changed the blending mode to add and I'm gonna use my lightest color from my color palette, which is the light purple. I am going to grab the mini light bulb and you've guessed it, we're just going to stamp that light bulb wherever we want a light. So you're welcome to make it any size you want. You're welcome to add as many lights as you want as well. I'm just going to might make it a little bit smaller. Perfect. So I'm just going to stamp my lights in the corners. Feel free to place them wherever you want or to just do exactly the same as mine. So we have our lights. It's not looking super realistic. So I think it still needs a little bit of shadow behind it. So one way to do that, and I know a lot of people were asking me, how do you make your light bulbs look so bright and realistic? And the trick is to have multiple layers set with different blending modes. So this layer is just set to add. So what we can do is just duplicate the layer and change the blending mode of the one underneath to multiply and then change the color of those lights to a dark purple. So trust the process guys, it's not looking great just now, but if you move it to the side, you'll see it creates like a shadow for each individual light. So I'm gonna move it in the same direction as my dimensional effect and I'm just gonna add some Gaussian blur because I want it to be super soft. That's pretty much it guys. There's a few things I want to do and that's just adding some final highlight touches and I think what we can do first of all before we move on to anything else is add a bit of shadows and highlights on that arrow because at the moment it just looks a little bit flat. So let's go back to the arrow and you can work just above that layer mask. So you select your arrow layer and create a new layer on top, make it a clipping mask and we're going to change the blending mode to add again to add some highlight and I'm going to grab the light purple with the smooth details brush and here I'm just going to try and give some volume to that shape as best as I can <laughs> kind of adding a little bit of a highlight on the arrow that feel free to do as many again as many layers as we want if you want to add more details or not and I'm gonna do the same but add a layer set to multiply so create a new layer make it a clipping mask change the blending mode to multiply and using the dark purple I'm just going to add some shadow It's not extremely precise, to be honest, but I don't think it needs to be. Kind of creating some feather effect on the tail. Perfect. Great. 
I think this is looking pretty good. I have also provided my highlight pen brush that you can use to add some reflections on the corners. So I like to create a new layer on top of everything else for that and change the blending mode to add. And here, if you've done any of my classes, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Again, I always recommend to keep this very subtle. And this is something I go over in my courses, how to really figure out where to position everything. How to make sure it's consistent and super realistic. All right, at this stage, you're more than welcome to add as much detail as you want. You can add some texture, some rust effect. I think that would look really cool. I have plenty of those brushes available in my toolkits. I would recommend checking out the Nostalgia Lettering Toolkit or the RetroSign Toolkit 2.0. There's plenty of like rust brushes that would look super awesome. Before we finish, there's one last thing we can do and that's adding some lights on those light bulbs because at the moment they look a little bit off. So let's just create a new layer and change the blending mode to add and I'm gonna grab the lens flare and I'm going to be using the light purple again and here feel free to have fun guys we're just going to stamp those flares on the light bulbs I'm gonna make mine slightly smaller lower the opacity a little bit I think that's better okay so tell me if you guys think this is the best step as well. I just love doing that. So fun. Great. And we're pretty much done here to be honest, but I want to add one last thing. I have given you guys a brush called Flying Hearts. You can play around with it and just add it wherever you want. What we can do here is create a new layer change the blending mode to add using any color you want. I'm gonna use that light purple. So with this brush, you can just add more pressure and it's going to create bigger hearts. And if you add less pressure, it's going to make smaller hearts. I'll let you play with this one, guys. Feel free to add as many hearts as you want or as little as you want. I've also added a little bit of Gaussian blur just to make them look almost like um, those bulky lights, those photography lights. That's pretty much all I've done, guys. So I really hope you have something that looks super cool. I'll make sure to share a high resolution image so you guys can see all of the tiny little details of this artwork. Good work, guys. Congratulations on making it till the end. And I look forward to seeing your results. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was helpful, that you've learned something new. I also hope that you stick around and watch more of my tutorials. As I always say, if you wanna learn more with me, if you wanna really get into all of the details of how I add shadows, highlights, how I choose my colors, how I add background elements and all that kind of stuff, then I would recommend you check out my online courses. In my RetroSign Masterclass 2.0, we really go into much more details where I 
share some composition techniques. I also go over how to add all of those texture, how to add realism to your piece and all of those background elements as well. And if you join any of my courses as well, you get access to the student community, which allows you to ask me any questions anytime. And as always guys, if you try this tutorial, please make sure to tag me. I love seeing what you guys are doing and I always reply to everyone. So make sure you tag me at Aurelie Marin. I wish you all a very happy Valentine's Day and I'll see you guys in my next video.